they, they volunteer two, you know, two, two games a week in a practice or whatever, you know, this will help them understand what the kids don't know and, and really, you know, be able to formulate and be laser focused on that. But then all of the results then go back up to Little League and they end up having, you know, they, they have all this data about what the kids know, what they don't know. They can put out different things and understand, you know, and they can, it, it's a total, I think it's the best way to really teach this game and develop our kids. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Clearing the Bases, the podcast where we step up to the plate and dive deep into the world of youth baseball. I'm your host, Jimmy Filangieri. You know, on this show, we discuss all things related to the preparation and development of youth baseball players, coaches, and yes, even parents. So sit back, settle in, and get ready to hear from some of the greatest baseball minds out there. You know, it, it, nobody has fun sitting in math class and being lost. You know, like I'm sitting yeah. in al- algebra and I, I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, I'm trying to, you know, I just hope the teacher doesn't call. Me. Well, that's the same thing in baseball. You know, if, 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 if you're sitting out there in the field and, you, you, all right, there's runners on second and third and, you know, there's like five different things that are going on because of the score and, and you know, the, you just want to, if you know, if you understand the game, it, it's just much better to be involved. All righty, everybody, we're going to take a little bit of a different direction here. We're going to go into the world of the Six Tool app. And let me tell you something. This app is something that is just, I find it to be very incredible. So we're going to talk to John Rosen from Six Tool app, and he's going to bring us up to speed on everything you can do with this app. And I I really think it's a great thing. How are we doing tonight, John? Doing really well, Jimmy. Thank you very much for having me on. I really, really appreciate it. No, it's, it's my privilege. I mean, when I come across something like this, which I don't very often, okay, when I come across something like this that I really believe could help youth baseball players, coaches, um, even parents, um, I think it's a great thing, and I want everybody to know about it. But you know what, John, before we get into it, let's let the people hear a little bit about the 6-2 lab. For baseball coaches like you, every game brings measurable progress. However, game time isn't the time for trial and error learning. Instead, have a proactive approach, use Six Tool, the best baseball player development tool on the market. We provide a platform to level up your coaching strategy by helping you to quickly identify and address your player's knowledge of the game. By using our easy to implement interactive player quizzes, You can assess position-specific issues, overall baseball IQ, and much more. Win more games and develop better overall baseball players with effective off-the-field training. Visit us at 6-tool.com. 6-tool. Get ahead in the game. So tell us a little. Let's let's start from the beginning. How did this all come about? Sure. Well, um, so... I'm a stepdad or a dad to two boys who uh, are baseball crazy kids. And so we went through the whole, you know, little league baseball through, you know, uh, middle school, through high school, through travel ball. You know, and both were lucky enough and talented enough to play at the next level. They played in college. One played D1 at Richmond. The other played D3 at Washington in the league. And, you know, throughout that process, also, we, we you know, I probably watched three thousand baseball games between the, the two of them, and I, I I wish I wish I were joking, but that's probably about the right number. And you know, like when they're in middle school and, and high school, you expect some 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 hiccups with regard to where you know where kids are throwing the baseball and what they're doing and stuff like that. Just they're not really thinking about the game. But when you get to high, when you get to college, you you I realized quickly after watching college baseball that a lot of these kids just didn't understand the situations that they were in. And I found that, I found that like just fascinating. When you, when you peel back the onion, there's a lot of logical reasons for that. And and I'll go through them a little bit. I mean, you and I are probably about the same age. I'm 58. And, 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 you know, when I was growing up, I, I lived in 
the middle of Connecticut. If the wind was right and the barometric pressure was good, I could maybe get the Yankees, the Mets, or the Red Sox on TV. And you know, there wasn't 5,000 channels. There wasn't the internet. There wasn't apps. There wasn't computer, you know, gaming. There wasn't any of that stuff. And, you know, we would watch baseball. We'd, I'd watch baseball and I'd listen to yeah. somebody who used to play, whether it was Phil Rizzuto or, you know, Ralph Kiner or the Mets or whatever. And they, they'd talk about, hey, that play happened because of this. And you're just sitting there on your couch after playing baseball all day in your neighborhood. You know, they, you, you eat and you go watch the game and you're, you're sitting there and you probably fall asleep in the, in the fifth inning in the middle of the summer and you do it all over again the next day. But, you know, you get one or two nuggets every day about what happened in the game based on what happened. And you, you don't realize this, but you almost by osmosis, you learn the game of baseball, but that doesn't happen today. And, you know, and, and, you know, there's also things like, you know, with the sports center where they don't have to listen, they don't have to watch a full game. They can get all the scores and all the home runs, all the great defensive plays in a half hour. And that's pretty much it. And so, you know, when, when, you know, coaches, it, it almost gets the, the, it almost gets facilitated by the college coaching carousel or the routine, the recruiting process, because, you know, you're, you're funneled into big groups and you're basically, you know, you've got all these metrics about physical metrics, 60 yard dash, your spin rate, if you're a pitcher, exit velo, um, you know, all these things that really weren't even, they weren't even invented when we were, when we were their age. They never you know, thought about, yeah. Right, they just never were. I mean, we, you just were like, hey, that kid can play, or that guy can play. Maybe right. he timed the guy in the 60, but, you know, we were still bench pressing with buckets of water back then. And so, yeah. you know, it wasn't it, it wasn't a thing. But now everything is so scientific. But the only thing that isn't scientific is these kids' knowledge of the game and the strategic parts about baseball that can truly win or lose a game for you. And that they create good memories or bad memories, and that depends on – you know, what happens that day. Yeah. Yeah. And and you're preaching to the choir because forget about the college level. I get them at the high school level. And when I get them to your point, yes, they, they just don't know how to play the game. So we're, we'll say handicapped with having to try and teach them the game in a short amount of time. I know for sure that we don't we don't give them everything that they need to know to go and play at the next level. So right. college coaches, they must be really pulling their hair out. They must all look like me. But because they're getting high school kids that, again, don't know how they don't know, you know, just uh, th there's a lot of stuff. I talk to a lot of college coaches and they tell me, number one, I hear all of the time is base running. Very simple right. thing to teach your players. Nobody teaches it. Right. And we have this argument all the time internally. We So Six Tool is a bunch of guys that uh, played baseball at some level. A lot of them played in minor leagues and, you know, college and that type of thing. Um, but we're all baseball nuts. And, you know, we, we have this conversation all the time. Like, would you rather a kid hit 300 and, you know, maybe run you out of two innings a month as opposed to a kid that maybe hits 270, but he's going to, you know, he he's heads up and he understands – you know, all the different angles and everything else. And, and he, he, you know, you know that every kid has, every team has one of those kids that just makes something out of nothing. And you realize that kid just saw something that even the coaches didn't see. Yeah. And, you know, and that's, those are the types of kids you, you, you want on the, the team because they can, they can be the difference in a one or two run game. Yeah. Yeah. And they, they do understand the game. I mean, uh, uh, one player does come to mind that, you know, f for instance, I, I didn't have a steal sign with him on the bases. I didn't need to. He right. knew when to steal. He knew when not to steal. And he just did his thing. And right. you just and let him go. Because... Like was, if the ball looked like he was going to hit the dirt, he was gone. Like it didn't even, exactly. they, like it didn't matter. It was, he was gone. And he was probably fast enough where even if it didn't hit the dirt, he was probably going to get the base stolen anyway. But he knew that, you know, it's, it's heading towards the dirt. It, even if he catches it cleanly, it's going to be hard for the catcher to, you know, get him at second base. So, but yeah. to your point, but to your point, it's rare. Yes. Well, it is. And, and that's the unfortunate part about it. And, and yeah. that's really why. So so what we did was, um, you know, after I watched a bunch of college baseball and I realized that there was a, you know, there, there, there was a problem here. And, 
Um, you know, and it wasn't like I knew how big the problem was. I just felt like, you know, if this is happening here. It's got to be happening everywhere. And then, then you start watching pro games and they, they run it every once in a while. You see some crazy plays. You're like, wow, that guy made it all the way to the pros and he didn't understand. Like, you know, there was a, there was a situation, a couple, uh, this is when I was a kid, but, you know, I, and I don't remember who it was, but it was a situation where the batter got hit by the baseball. And there was no way if you knew about, you know, what the situation was that you, the pitcher was not trying to hit the batter. It just was not, there is no possible way that that was going to, you know, the, and the batter got aggravated and charged the mound. And you're like, well, why would he throw at you in that situation? It's a very high leverage situation. The game's at stake. The fastball got away from him. Now, you know, if, if it's a seven run game in the eighth inning and, you know, you happen to pimp a home run two, two nights ago, you might you might think, all right, this is it's coming, but that's right. not what was going on here, and it was very obvious. And sometimes it's so obvious when a, a situation unfolds that you realize that wow, that person just didn't understand the situation, it just didn't. Yeah. And yeah. you know, and so I mean, watch watching the Yankee game the other night, Chisholm's on second base, no outs, he yeah. gets picked off. How does right. that happen? How does that right. happen with no outs? You're on, you're in scoring position and you get picked off. That's insane. Right. right. And, and that's the interesting part. So we have, I mean, at, at six school, we have, we have a sort of a smattering of different teams that are on our, uh, on our, on our platform. We have, uh, we've got a couple of major league baseball teams. We've got a bunch of college teams, probably about 30 or 40 college teams. We've got a couple hundred high school teams and, I would say uh, quite a few, like, you know, quite a few travel organizations, travel baseball teams that are on our, our platform as well. And, and, you know, um, so our charter has been from the beginning is yes, we want to create a great business and that's terrific. And, and, and we're, we're working our way, inching our way every day to making that happen. Um, but we also want to just uplift the game. I mean, because, you know, I've had conversations with a lot of very influential people within within the baseball world, and I was introduced to you through one of them, Jeff Schaefer. Yeah. And you know, um, and you know, these these people love the everybody loves the game. They they want to make sure that the game stays, you know, like that we're all good stewards of the game. And and you know, the idea that you know if, if we could help just keep these kids you know, engage in the game, fans of the game, instead of, and if they learn, if they know the game, they understand the game, it gets more interesting to them, you know, and there's a Absolutely. lot of kids that, you know, I, I know a lot of kids through my sons playing travel baseball that, you know, they're tremendous athletes, but they just play baseball when it's time to play, or they just think about baseball when it's time to, you know, go to the field. And well, well, I think a lot of it, and again, you know, I, I talk about it all the time is I think that, a lot of the problem is that players don't practice enough. They they play too many damn games and they're not mm -hmm. practicing, especially, you know, at the travel. I mean, high school, we, we practice six days a week. If, if we don't right. have games, we're practicing every single day. Um, yeah. But the, in the travel world, and that was something that you said that I kind of want to backtrack a little bit to, is the number of travel organizations that are actually utilizing the Six Tool app. But the kids have to practice more. So what I, and, and that's one of the things that I love about this, this app is because if you send out a quiz to your team, well, that's a 10 minute practice that, right. that is actually benefiting everybody. It's benefiting the coach. It's benefiting the players, benefiting everyone. So, right. but getting back to the travel thing, do you have a lot of travel organizations that are signing up for this? We do, um, but it's it's a slow go. I'm not going to lie to anybody. It's a slow go because you know we we we've only been out here for about a year, year and a half. Um, yeah, so we 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 do have quite a few travel organizations that are on this, and and for travel organizations, I think it's a no brainer. And and here's the reason why: travel organizations are getting clobbered right now because the big knock on them is they don't develop their kids. Yeah. And, you know, if your kid doesn't get enough playing time, you're going to up and leave to another to another team. And you know, so that conversation at the end of the season goes, hey, well, you know, you didn't play my son all that much. And little Johnny, you know, I don't feel like you developed him. And the travel organization said, whoa, hang on there, Mr. Smith. Here's here's what we did. We have six tool. 
we create quizzes every week. We have two or three quizzes every week. We track the progress. We know what little Johnny knows and what little Johnny doesn't know. He scored 65% on all the quizzes. And then the 35% that he got wrong, we made sure that he understood the, you know, the aspects of the infield fly rule or whatever it is. And, you know, it's a very simple and quite honestly, it's, it's the, for most parents in a travel organization, it might cost them $15 a year to be on, to be on six tool through a travel organization, maybe $20, $25. But when you take a look at the, that's probably about 15 minutes of a, of a batting lesson. But if you could help your kid not do something silly, you know, at a big tournament with a lot of college coaches there, that's worth its weight in gold. Yeah. You know what I mean? If, if, if they understand the game so that they don't have to run it, to have created an embarrassing situation for them because they didn't understand the situation. Well, you know what? It was, you know, there's been a lot worse money spent than, you know, the, the $20 a year on, on six to one. Yeah. I mean, and that's why I brought it up because in my mind, every travel organization, every travel team across the country should have this. Because, well, because again, you know, my biggest pet peeve with, with most travel teams is that they don't practice enough. Okay, so right. if you can't practice enough, that's fine, right? But send, like you said, two, three times a week, send a quiz out to your players. At least you're helping them in some way. Right. So let me let me back up a little bit and explain what Six Tool actually is. Because we've been yep. talking about it, and yes, it's, it's, it's a baseball IQ app. But so a coach and, and Jimmy, you're your high school coach. You actually have you have six tool. So you have what we call it's a it's basically a learning management system. It's a platform that has we have three about three thousand questions that are already pre-programmed. All, a lot of them are video questions. It's very simple and easy. You create you know you you basically say I want to I want a quiz on baseball lingo, and I want you know five questions, and um, I want everybody on the team to have it. You can break your team down into hitters, pitchers, you know, like in your case with high school, freshmen, sophomore, junior, seniors, whatever. It could be anybody you want. You can send it off. Just You could create all the groups you want and send it off as you see fit. They, the, your players have the app on their phone. When you send a quiz, they get a little ding and they say, oh, I got a quiz. You give them maybe, you know, maybe it's five questions. Five questions might take them anywhere from, you know, three and a half to five minutes. That's it. They, you know, they take the questions, they, 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 they take the quiz, you get the results individually and collectively. So now you know what your kids don't know. And that's, that's all the, that, that makes all the difference in the world. That is, that is for a coach that that's gold right there. You actually now know that, Hey, listen, we need to go over the infield fly rule because our kids aren't a hundred percent sure on that. Or, the other nice part about this is you can then create your own videos and your own questions if you like. So colleges that have video de departments, a lot of times they have they have one person that just basically sends clips to their coaching staff and the coaching staff creates questions from that. Or you could easily, with your iPhone, have somebody videotape you going through your signals and say, hey, did I just put on the hit and run or the suicide squeeze? And, you know, right away, at least at some point, you know that every kid on your team knew the signs. Right. Right. And I, I, I can tell you, so I just sent out my first quiz um, just uh, <clears throat> just last week. And I got to tell you, John, it it opened my eyes like huge. I mean, because I was shocked at how little they know from the first quiz and the first one that I, that I picked because the ABCA is dear to my heart. So I took the ABCA quiz and I sent it out. And again, I was shocked. There, there are kids on, on the team that, that got 44.4% right. Right. That's, that's right. unacceptable to high school level in my mind. Well, but, but the thing is, it's a learning, it's a, it's a, it, it's a learning moment. It's a teaching moment. And, and that's the cool part about, it. especially I'm a big believer and I, I should also include travel baseball in this because hopefully you've got travel baseball organizations have kids for multiple years. But if you have, if you're a high school coach, you could literally start, you know, as they're entering high school, get them on this app and you can start having kids 
um, you know, you, you can start creating your way, you know, like, you know, XYZ high school's way of playing baseball. And, you know, so you've got four or five years with these kids where they can, you can really impact their knowledge of the game. And it can be cumulative. And that's the beautiful part about this. They're not going anywhere. And it's, it's, it's not expensive. And you can easily, you know, you're, you're basically helping these kids. And it's a great way in the off season to have these kids thinking about baseball and for you to keep in touch with them. Right. And, you know, I, I, I want to make it clear that when I said this is unacceptable, I, I is all I meant was that I was shocked at how yes. little they knew. So, right. but again, the way I saw it was, okay, let me turn this into a good thing. So now That's right. I'm going to, I'm going to send out an invite. I'm going to get the whole team on a zoom meeting and we're going to yes. review all of the questions and we're going to go That's over right. it. And I mean, if I can do that from now till next March, to when the season starts, the boys will all right. be better. That's right. Well, and, and there's there's a you know there there's some sort of statistic, and I don't remember what it is, but you know um, most games that are won and lost by two or less runs hinge on one play, and yeah. and you know that's <laughs> you generally speaking, you either want that play back or you're happy that that play happened because you know you 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 profited from it, but. The idea is, and baseball is one of the only sports where you can't call a timeout in the middle of the play and, you know, tell your right fielder, hey, throw the ball. Will you throw the ball to second instead of home? Because I know <laughs> I know you got to college with that great arm, but we don't need to show that off right now. We need to keep that kid to just hit that ball. We need to keep him at first to keep the double play in order so that we don't run it, you know, we don't we avoid a big end. Right. And, you know, those are the things that, you know, that you end up seeing because – travel baseball and some of this showcase baseball create bad habits. And, and, you know, I hate that. I'm not trying to dump on that, on those, those entities, but that is part of some, that is sometimes part of the problem. Right. But it's, I, I don't feel like you're, you're dumping on them. I mean, it's just, you know, like I said, it's just that they, they just, I don't know what's whether it's because they don't have the time, they don't put the emphasis on it or whatever the case is, but they don't practice enough. And then what you just said about the showcase mentality, I have to say as a coach, that mentality drives me bananas. Yeah. Um, you know, you have pitchers that are trying to throw the ball through a brick wall constantly. You have hitters that are trying to jack the ball out of the park constantly. And that's right. that showcase mentality because when they go to a showcase, what do they want? They want to have velo. They want to have um, velo on the mound. They want to have exit velo. They want to have launch angle. They want to have a good spin rate. They want, Right. Well, wait a minute. None of that stuff means crap if you can't play the game. None of it means anything. So, so true. So true. You know, you you, so you touched a little bit of a nerve there. <laughs> yeah. No. 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 And and that's you know and and you know that's that's the whole thing. And you know and and I don't believe kids are watching enough baseball. And they yes. they may watch it during the playoffs, and that's great. Um, I'll go back to my childhood one more time. I can remember I was I played third base in high school. And I, George Brett was one of my favorite players. There was a guy in third base, and George Brett, my head burst into flames. I never even thought you could do this. But there was a kind of a choppy ground ball down to third. And it was, it, I, it was in one of those, um, like Kansas City, the Royals had that, that um, Astro turf that was basically a parking lot but in those days, you know. And he, <laughs> he grabs the ball. There's a guy in third base who's sort of adjacent to him, but, you know, it's kind of a, he's kind of a non-factor. Well, Brett grabs the ball and they basically really deeks really hard that he's throwing the ball at first base. But then he turns around and just dives and tags tags the guy out at third because the guy at third is just sitting there watching <laughs> watching the play and he's out. And I was like, that was an I was like that. I yeah. I could have lived my whole life and never saw that play and never even knew that that play existed. Do you know what I mean? And, 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 yeah. and those are the types of things that. As a baseball fan, you go, that's that's awesome. And it gets you excited about the game. And that's what yeah. we're trying to do is help these kids enjoy the game better. And I think they will enjoy the game better if, you know, it, it, nobody has fun sitting in math class and being lost. You know, <laughs> like I'm sitting yeah. in al algebra and I, I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, I'm trying to, you know, I just hope the teacher doesn't call me. Well, that's the same thing in baseball. You know, if, 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 if 
if you're sitting out there in the field and you, you, all right, there's runners on second and third, and you know there's like five different things that are going on because of the score and whatever, and you know the, the, you just want to if, if you know if you understand the game, it, it's just much better to be involved in it. Well, like you just said, with that George Brett play, okay, that's baseball IQ and that's instincts. Now, yes. if if you know if you don't train um, in a practice environment situations that happen the most in a game where you know like we do that we we put the put them in different situations constantly and and i always tell the boys when we're doing this okay have fun enjoy it okay try and make a highlight make an espn moment okay sure. by paying attention to what's going on and like you say maybe something would happen but but i'm trying to create those instincts and it's right. it's if if you don't practice and do that on the field because again another thing that that i really believe on the field is fail here make the mistakes here at practice let's totally do right. it so that we can talk about it we can work on it right so there has to be more of that which will develop that instinct and that iq that's right that's right and so the other nice part about six tool and you sort of just touched on it is you know so we have thousands of questions in our library. So, and, and you can go in and, and filter them out through how, whatever you want to do, you want to do base running. If you want to do, you know, bunt defenses or the wheel play or whatever it is, you can have it all there. And so a lot of them are, are multiple choice questions. If you don't like the question, or if you like the question, but you don't like the answer that we think is right, you can tweak it. It's very simple and easy. You tweak it the way you want to tweak it, and you send it out to your kids. Maybe you do cutoffs and relays differently than the high school across town. No, not a problem. Just go ahead and do it. Um, you know, and, and the nice part about that, and I get a lot of feedback from coaches, is, you know, I almost like it when they tell me, listen, you know, that question was very controversial. We got into a 45-minute conversation on the bus ride to, you know, to on an away game because of this. And I'm like, Really? And I, at first I thought it was a, I, I used to look at it as like, it was a bad thing, but the coaches are all like, no, 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 you don't no, understand. Great. It was great. I finally got kids talking to me about what their thoughts are on strategy. And, you know, it, it was, you just sort of open them up and they go, no, 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 no. That, but, but the reason why I thought that is because I read the question this way. And this is, this is why I answered it that way. And you go, oh, okay, well that, that makes some degree of sense, but can you see you know, they start talking about baseball and it, all these all these organic conversations start popping up it's fantastic yeah well those debates are fantastic i know as a baseball coach i love having conversations about baseball with other coaches because of that because right. you discuss you know and and you should be doing it with your players um right. you know i'm looking at just to give everybody out there an idea so i'm just looking at like the we'll call it the um you know the blueprint quizzes that you have here so there's the ABCA quizzes, video breakdowns, outfield, where to throw the ball, defensive positioning, bunt plays, pitching approach, cutoffs and relays. I can keep going, people, but that just gives you an idea of some of the just click click on this, send it to your players, and you'll have um, a quiz given to them on, on bunt plays or defensive positioning and stuff. That's how great this app is. The other thing I wanted to ask you was coaches can also make up their own quizzes, right? Yes. Well, that... Yes, that's exactly right. And some of those quizzes that you just named off are from coaches that allowed us to, to basically give those quizzes out to other people. So yes, you can create your own quizzes very simply and easily. Um, you know, you can add video to it. You can, if somebody, let's say there's somebody that videos your high school games, you can chop that up. And, you know, like, and, and generally, because I've, I've done probably, I've, I've created probably a couple of hundred questions, if not more in inside the our, our platform um you know usually what you do is you you play the video up to a certain point and then you ask the question and then they you know then, then you can replay the video and it, it goes all the way through it but the idea is to understand you know there, it, it, the play goes to a decision point and now it's a fielder or a base runner what's your decision where should you be what should you be doing and and that's really where you know it's 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 pretty easy. You can easily 
create a field and you're the shortstop. So it has a shortstop. It has a scoreboard. It can be, you know, like it's uh, it's an eight, seven game in the bottom of the ninth and there's two men on and you're the shortstop. And it, and, uh, on the, on the question, it, boom, it's right there. You don't have to read all that stuff. It's all right there. And again, what I, what I like about what you just said is especially for our games. Okay. So something doesn't go right and it's on video and I can chop that video up, send it out to the guys and say, okay, guys, tell me what happened here. You know, who right. was supposed to be where, you know, or whatever, however I want to phrase right. it. But again, very, very powerful because you could, it, those are things that you can do that won't take time away from when you're on the field practicing. You could, you know, we're not well, allowed to practice uh, seven days in a row. So we'll practice the six days. Then the seventh day, I can send them that quiz and say, hey, guys, yeah. take a look at this. Well, the nice part about that is it also it also laser focuses those practices, too, because you now have real things that you know you need to address. And that's that's the nice part about that. Yeah. And the other thing that I love about it is that um, in my case, because the program that I'm with now is a new program last year was my first year there so i'm still at the beginning stages of trying to develop my culture and you know um, expectations and that type of stuff from players so again i can create a a quiz on my culture okay guys here's something study it and then create a quiz all right guys what about this that and the other thing and i'm I'm gonna go ahead no i I was just gonna say we have we have coaches that um, you know, it doesn't even have, you don't have to even quiz about baseball. It could be on code of conduct. It can be on, you know, like, you know, etiquette for the prom. It could be, I mean, there's a, just a lot of things that you can, you know, if you've got stuff you want to teach your kids, you can do it all through, you know, six tool and it doesn't have to have anything to do with baseball. Yeah. Yeah. I'm taking a, a, um, a coach's course with, um, Jeremy Schiedinger. And it was funny because one of the things we spoke about he said, ask your players to give you three words that explain your program. And I said, uh-oh. I said, I'm going to be in trouble here because I know I didn't hammer it home enough. So they're not right. going to know. So anyway, I, I went out and I asked them. So, okay, guys, you know, tell me this. And you got different answers from every kid. Sure. Now, I could, again, use a quiz now because we went over that and say, okay, guys, right. Give me three words that expri- um, explain our culture, and they should be able to get it right now. So it's, right. it's, right. it's a. I believe it's a fantastic teaching tool. Well, and and we do thank you. We we do a lot of um, like a lot of hitting coaches or a lot of pitching coaches. They will do a video. Let's say maybe a three or four minute video, just walking through something. Whether it's hitting, like maybe there's three three things that a hitting coach wants to talk about with the swing. And, you know, then you can go create a quiz and like, let's say they do it during the day and then at night they give them the quiz and maybe they don't do well on the quiz. Maybe they don't remember those three things. Well, that that's feedback to the to the instructor and says, you know what, maybe I'm not I'm I'm teaching this wrong or I'm not uh, I'm not stressing enough. You know, I'm, uh, I'm not stressing the things that I need that I want them to take away from this. And you can go through it again. But, I mean, it's also helpful for the coaches. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, one of the one of the things about learning is really you're not learning if, if, if you're not making mistakes. I always feel that way. So, right. great. You know, we went over hitting stuff and sent you out a quiz and you got a lot wrong. Great. Let's go over it again. And then, you know, right. hit them with it again somewhere down the road. And that's how they learn because I believe yeah. when a player gets something wrong, like the, the, the quiz that I just sent them, we're going to review that. I guarantee wow. you those kids that got those questions wrong will not get them wrong the next time. That's right. That's right. And now they know that. And, and that's the beautiful part about it is, you know, they, you know, now, now they may make a physical mistake. They may miss a ball. They may ball may go through their legs or whatever, but the idea that, you know, um, had they caught that ball, they would have known what to do with it or, or whatever. And that's, you know, but honestly, that's where I hate to say it, but you know, as you as you move up in in you know the baseball world, wins and losses mean a lot more, and it can cost the coach their job in the, at the college level. And I've yeah. seen it happen where you know they someone makes a you know I, just just makes an error in judgment, doesn't understand the situation, team loses a close game that they should have won, and you know they they get out of the conference playoffs. They're not in the conference playoffs by game. And all of a sudden that starts to look 
not so great to the to the you know to the people at the college and there you go yeah now here's the big here's the really big question okay yeah because this is near and dear to my heart how do we use this or should i say it this way how can this app help little league players like say 12 and under oh i don't know we didn't talk about this but you just set me up big time because i have <laughs> <laughs> i i have it sounds i have a dream but i do have a dream this is this is what i would love to be able to do and i'm trying i would love to set this up if i possibly could because at the little league level and well first and foremost one of the things i i, I really want to make sure of is we're not the the catalyst for kids getting a cell phone earlier than they need to. Cause that's one thing I don't <laughs> I, I, No, And I feel very strongly about this. We've had arguments yeah. internally about this and I truly feel, you know, I don't want some eight year old getting a cell phone because, because of this and, you know, being open to the world and all the crazy stuff that he might, he may, he or she, cause we also are in softball too, by the way, but we've been talking about baseball, but you know, um, but, you know, but I'm, so, I'm going to anyway, interrupt. I'm going to interrupt you for one second on that, okay? But yes. and I agree with you. Yes, I know you're not advocating for young kids to get cell phones, but when they're when they're that young, six, seven, eight years old, and if if this does apply there, and you can use it for those kids, then send it to the parent, and this yes. way the parent can well, sit with them. Yes, right. To to and I totally agree. I totally agree. But I, I want to at least while I was going down that path, I want to at least step back and mention that because that is yeah. something we just don't want that happen like let, let, use the parent's phone all for that that's fantastic um but what i would like to see happen is so little league is a very large organization okay and they they've got different you know every every town in america has a little league or every couple of towns in america has a little league i would love to see where little league itself sends out five questions a week to every kid who plays little league baseball those results go two places. One, they go back to the coach of that person, that little kid's team. And he, or, you know, the coach understands what everybody did individually and collectively so that, you know, these coaches, they're, you know, they're, and actually they're working at an insurance company 60 hours a week and they, they volunteer two, you know, two, two games a week in a practice, or whatever, you know, this will help them understand what the kids don't know and, and really, you know, be able to formulate and be laser focused on that. But then all of the results then go back up to Little League and they end up having, you know, they, they have all this data about what the kids know, what they don't know. They could put out different things and understand, you know, and they can, it, it's a total, I think it's the best way to really teach this game and develop our kids. And I, I that would be my, that's my dream. That That is my dream. If I could, somehow make that happen at some point that's what i would love to do well also for you know for little league coaches that's a great tool because now you could you could use that to set up your practice plan okay sure. so i sent out a quiz okay this is what they got wrong great when we meet to practice this week we're working on that and the kids will learn it i that's think true. that your app is more important for the 12 and under group than right. it is for any other group because if it if it gets through to the kids at that age, then I don't have to teach them all, all as much as as I do right. now when they get to high school and then beyond. That's right. And we I we've had some conversations with Major League Baseball and they've done all the studies and everything else. And you know, they love the idea of our app because a better educated child playing baseball turns into a fan much more so than somebody who doesn't know the game. And exactly. yeah, they, they, from their standpoint, this is basically we're, we're helping them create fans for life. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Like I said, if you can, if you can get this out to little league and have them do what you just ex explained and start building it up from the bottom with these younger players, man, yes. oh man, would that be fantastic? And, and you know, the, the cost of this is so when you spread it out amongst that many people, it's it's you know it's just ins it's insanely inexpensive but it's quite honestly probably the best money you can possibly spend i mean listen when you start getting when your kids start getting to travel baseball when they pat you know, we get when they get past the league and they start getting to the point where they want to play 
you know, they, they want to like compete against the best kids in the area and, you know, in, uh, you know, in, in the country, you know, the price goes, you know, just skyrockets, but this is still the best. I think, you know, you, you can spend $5,000 a year on hitting lessons or pitching lessons, but, you know, to spend $60 a year to understand baseball better, um, I think is a no brainer. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we talk about it all the time with, you know, guest speakers and stuff like that, where, you know, all right, it's $75 a head to come and listen to Steve Springer um, speak. And right. we, we tell them, you will think you will think nothing of dropping at $75 on an hour hitting lesson. OK, that your kid most likely will not come home and work on what he was taught in a lesson. So the lesson is kind of useless anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but you won't spend seventy five dollars to listen to somebody that's going to change his whole outlook on the game. That's right. your, same thing with with your point. All right. Whatever it costs to get this app. And I know it's very inexpensive. Right. Th that's that is money that is you'll get you'll get that money back a thousand times over. Well, and I, I've already seen it a few times, like, you know, where, yeah. where, you know, if, if I've just seen it a few times, I, there's, there's, there's no need to get into the, the examples, but yes, I mean, I've already seen it where, you know, um, a kid learns something on our app and then the play happened and in front of a coach, he was out, out, able to make the right, the right play. And all of a sudden the coach goes, Hey, who's that kid? Yeah. And, you know, yeah. they were able to tie it back to that one play where the coach so they, you know, I, I saw that, and that really made me think this kid, this this kid's different than everybody else. So, yeah. yeah. Well, John, I I mean, anything I can do to help promote, you know, your app, I'd love to do it because, again, I really think that, and believe me, I've been doing this show for going on four years. There is nothing that I would put on my show that I I always felt like was selling something. Okay, but in right. this case, I don't feel like it's so I, it's something that will benefit you. It's money well spent and anything I can help to, to promote it, I will do it. It's, it's fantastic. Jimmy, I, I appreciate that. We're, so we're coming out with an individual model probably within the next few months. That's where I think a lot of your, I mean, if, if, if your listeners are coaches, please come to our website. We can, you know, it's all right there for you as far as the pricing and everything else. But if you're looking for individual model, an individual model, if you're a parent or whatever, we should be having that uh, probably in the next probably two to three months. We should have the individual mode out. And there's a variety of different ways we can create quizzes for your kids. You can maybe create quizzes for your kids or whatever and, and just keep track of what they know and what they don't know. So thank That's you, right. Jimmy. Really, really appreciate it. I, I, I can't thank you enough. No, I mean, it was my pleasure. I Like I said, I don't come across a lot of stuff like this where I feel like I want to help get it out there but i this just hit me so hard and again thanks to jeff schaefer for bringing it up and putting yes. us together because I'm, I'm sure jeff believes in it just the way i do well you know and, and i've been so lucky to, un, to to meet some people that are really passionate about baseball but not but but also passionate about like you know again going back to being good stewards of the game and jeff is certainly one of those guys you know matt tyner is another there's a there's just a bunch of guys out there that that um, have helped us and introduced us to some really cool people that, you know, they knew that could help us, you know, get this out to more people. So, and, and we're working on that every day. We're working on that. We're, we're, you know, we, we will be, I, I truly feel in the next three years, we will be as ubiquitous as, you know, any other, any other, you know, uh, baseball tool that's out there that, you know, is in everybody's hands. So why don't you give everybody your website and give them any social media sites or anything like that that you have? Yeah, so uh, the, our website is basically www.6-tool.com. And we've got, a, our, our, we've got an Instagram account. We've got a Twitter account. We're on Facebook, um, you know, and we're on LinkedIn. But, you know, we, we are working diligently on our marketing piece. That's one place that we've not done a – bang up job with with regard to you know just getting it out there but we've been working on other things we've been actually working on the product we've been working on making sure that the product is solid and, and stable and everything else and uh we're at a really really good place we you know we've done tournaments with 
literally hundreds of kids at the tournament and nobody's had a bad experience on the app. You know, it, it's, it's been a really good situation, but um, yeah, so we're ww6-tool.com and please feel free to, you know, uh, send us a quick email or if you have any questions, let us know. Great. Like I said, John, I really appreciate you coming on. This was, this was great. Um, and you know, we'll, we'll stay in touch and That's I'll right. keep giving you feedback on how I'm doing with, you know, the quizzes Please do. and the team. Please do. You're the best, Alrighty. Jimmy. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. So I guess you could tell from this episode, my thoughts on the six tool app. You know, I always said on this show, I would never try and sell you anything. And I'm not trying to sell you this is all I'm saying is that here is an app that I know because I've used it will be able to help coaches, players, again, even parents to have a better understanding of the game and how the game is played. It's very inexpensive. And I just think that if, if you're not using it, then you're really, you're missing out. I can tell you, I'm using it and I love it to be able to give out a quiz to my players. And you know, you're, you're really digging deep inside these kids and finding out what they do know and what they don't know. And it just gives you such a great opportunity to further educate them so that when they get on the field, they are more comfortable what they're doing. And once they're more comfortable, when they know the situations and they have all of this information, well, the player's confidence is going to go through the roof. So check it out. Check out the 6Tool app at 6-tool.com and see what it's all about. So if you enjoyed today's show, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Visit the website at the ctbshow.net. Leave us a review, even sign up to be a guest. Your feedback helps us bring you the best content and reach more people in the baseball community just like you. And if you have any questions or topics you'd like us to cover, reach out to us on social media, X, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and please drop us an email, clearingthebases at gmail.com. Once again, thanks for tuning in, and I can't wait to see you back here for the next episode. Until then, coaches and players, keep practicing, stay positive, and remember, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you on the next one.